grateful for who you are. Father, be thy exalted. Lord, we want to say we are grateful for life, for preservation, for protection, for provision. Father, be thy exalted. Be thy glorified. 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 Holy Spirit, be enthroned. Holy Spirit, be enthroned. Be enthroned, Lord. Be enthroned. Be enthroned. From east to west, be enthroned. From north to south, be enthroned. Lord, be enthroned. Be enthroned. Let your throne be established in our heart tonight. Let your throne be established. We come against every noise in the hearts of the brethren. In the hearts of the brethren. Every noise of depression. Every noise of doubt. Every noise of anxiety. Let them be arrested. Let them be silent. Be silent. Be silent. Be silent. Be silent. We decree peace into every heart. Holy Spirit, be enthroned, Lord. Holy Spirit, be enthroned. Let your throne be established. Let your throne be established. Let your throne be established. Oh Lord, let your name alone be glorified, O God. Visit us. The Bible says He sent forth His word, and His word healed them and delivered them from their destruction. Lord, let your word visit us tonight. Open our eyes of understanding. The Bible says the entrance of thy word giveth light. Oh Lord, and giveth understanding to the simple. Let your word, O oh God, bring forth direction, bring forth deliverance, bring forth direction, bring forth impartation in the name of Jesus. Father, let your name alone be exalted. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Once again, I welcome everyone to tonight's meeting. Um, I want to thank everyone for your support. May the Lord continue to strengthen every one of us in Jesus' name. Yesterday, we had uh, we embarked on a topic which was titled distraction. Distraction, you know, being disengaged, you know. And tonight, our topic tonight is titled focus. Focus. Um, there's no way you can prevent distraction without working on your focus. Focus. I want us to quickly open our Bible to the book of 1 Corinthians 7, verse 20. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 20. 1 Corinthians 7, 20. If you are there, you can go ahead and read 1 Corinthians 7, 20. I read, let every man abide in the same calling where he was called. Let every man abide in the same calling where, wherein he was called. Brethren, <clears throat> it's very important that we realize that our objective focus first is what God had called you to do. Aside from our goals, our ambition, our dreams, our vision, the first objective focus of every believer, of every man, should be what God had called you to do. And here we see Apostle Paul telling us, say, let every man abide in the same calling wherein he was called. So the question I bring to you tonight is, what has God called you to do? What has God, because in my preparation for this, I realized that there can be no focus without vision. There can be no focus without vision. You focus on something, that is why they call it vision. It's both ways. There can be no vision 
You can't tell me you have a vision of something without focus on it. The same way there can be no vision without focus. And here we just read from 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 20. He says, let every man abide in the same calling wherein he was called. Brethren, what has God called you to do? What is God calling you to do? It is very important that you go on a journey and obtain this revelation. It's very important to obtain this information. God, what are you calling me to do? What have you called me to do? And do what? Remain. Let every man remain with that assignment until he brings you the next word. Let's look. Let's quickly dig dig a little bit. The book of, let's look at the book of John. Chapter 6, verse 15. John chapter 6, verse 15. John chapter 6, verse 15. John 6, 15 says, When Jesus perceived, when Jesus therefore perceived that they would come and take him by force to make him a king, When, I'm so sorry, when Jesus therefore perceived that they would come and take him by force to make him a king, he departed again into a mountain, himself alone. Jesus was so focused that he didn't allow the applause of men, the, 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 the zeal of men, Men wanted to enthrone him as king. How do you make a king who is already a king? It's like a man trying to trying to manipulate a woman by calling her, oh, you are very beautiful. You're very gorgeous. You don't need to affirm that. She knows that. Once you know that, the affirmation of those men does not bring confusion. It will never, I'm telling you, in as much that we are emotionally wired being, psychologically, men and women, you know, um, appreciate compliments. But you see, once you know who you are, the affirmation of men does not change what God has said concerning you. And that is why it's very important to really know, know, know what God is saying concerning you, to have a vision of what God has said. Brethren, Jesus was supposed, despite all he carries on the inside, the Son of God, full of power and of the Spirit, yet he had the opportunity to be enthroned. The Bible says he departed. He, de he didn't know. It's not part of my assignment. It's not part of my assignment. It was focus. The Bible says, I have said my face like a flint. It was focus. His face was focus. Brethren, I don't know what other things that is trying to bring distraction. You need to be very, very focused. And the first thing you should be focused on is what has God called you to do? Okay, well, let's quickly look at the definition of focus. Focus is anything that consumes your time, your energy, your finance, and your attention. Focus is anything that consumes your time, your energy, your finance, and your attention. So I want you to do a thorough evaluation. What, where do you invest most of your time? Where do you invest your energy the most daily? 
Where do you invest your money? Then where do you invest your attention? What do you give the large part of your time, your greatest attention? Is it TV shows? Is it VH1? Could it be, it could be anything. What is that thing that you give your energy the most? What is that thing you give your greatest attention to? Is it fame? Is it, is it to be known? Some people, believe me, some people's greatest desire is to be popular. I'm, I'm being honest with you. Is to be known, to be popular, to be, they want to be known, they want to be famous. Not knowing that even fame has its own danger. It's a big danger. I'm telling you. You can never succeed in anything without absolute focus. A man, a believer, can never succeed in anything without absolute focus, without giving absolute attention, without giving absolute energy to it. There can be no success. Many want to succeed, but they are not willing to invest their time. Many want to succeed, Oh, I desire to know God. I desire to serve God. It will cost you. You have to invest your time. Brethren, time is the trademark, is the currency we use to trade in the spirit realm for anything. I'm going to repeat that again. To transact, to buy anything in the spirit realm, the mode of transaction for this transaction, to collect anything, to do business between earth, between earth and heaven, is your time. Time is the means of transaction. Any man, any believer who is not willing to trade in time to transact in the place of prayer, invest their time in the place of study, invest their time in the place of, of strategic planning, meditation, they can't get anything from heaven. They can't obtain anything from the Father. Time is the biggest asset. It's the currency we use to trade, to receive anything from above. A man, a woman, who is not willing to trade with ease or her time, can never become what God has called them to become. Focus. This means that you must focus at the beginning to the end because many started with great focus at the beginning but lose focus at the middle or in between and never finish well. This, what I'm trying to say in summary is, it's not just good to start well. It's not just good to focus at the beginning. It's like a student who started a semester, very zealous. Let me use myself as an example. When I was in university in Nigeria, I studied accounting. My first year, very zealous, very zealous. I was attending classes, even though I was smoking weed, drinking, smoking, doing everything, fornication. But I was so focused on school. By the time I was going to get to second year, I began to skip classes. I began to, if everything began to go down. Brethren, it's not just important to be focused at the beginning of your vision, of that goal, of that, what God has called you to do but to focus to the end because only those who finish well will get a prize. Only those who finish well, who stay focused to the end, we, we see the manifestation of what the Lord is saying. And that is why I always say, me personally, this is just my own philosophy. I don't rejoice when they anoint people that they have been ordained. To me, to me personally, I don't even think they should be doing celebration for it. Because have you ever, <laughs> have you ever seen where they are celebrating a person who is being enrolled in the army to go and die? 
<laughs> have you seen a family celebrate before? That today our son is signing a document, his life, his life sentence. And you see people celebrating that today. Our son and our daughter, he or she, they have signed their life sentence that they might die by being enrolled in the army. You will never see it. Excuse me one moment. Because I'll go give it to grandma to give you medication, okay? okay? Tell her to give you cough medication, all right? You know, what am I trying to say? I'm so sorry for that. Please, I'm begging you. A lot of people, they like me, you know, in as much that God has given me the grace to be confident, I don't like limelight. I don't like it. I want to make God known. I want to make Jesus famous everywhere. But to be everywhere, to be, I don't like just keep me in isolation. Let's get the job done. Then go back to the secret place. Get the job done. Even when I go on vacation, I just want to be indoor. I told my colleagues at work, when I go on vacation, I don't want to be doing sightseeing because I have worked too hard. Now I'm jumping from one train, from one bus. That means I'm not on vacation. That is another, that is another stress for me. <laughs> I just want to rest, eat, drink, go to the pool, swim, use the gym, at the vacation site, see some few places in a few hours and back again and rest and study. Yours might be different, but that is mine. Me on vacation and be going everywhere, that is another stress for me. <laughs> That's another stress. So what am I trying to say? It's very important not to start. Starting is not enough. And that's why one of the things I've said in the past that has affected many of us in schools, in our career, is we never had people who prepared us. We never prepared to let us know that this discipline you're about to embark on, it will cost you something. A lot of times we have, we have what they call them, counselors in schools, but they don't really tell the people what they really need to hear. I'm telling you, I've had privilege to go to counselors but they have never, never, they assume that you know what you are supposed to know. Imagine if most students have been told that this discipline, it will cost you a minimum of study of eight hours every week, a minimum of, of 10 hours every week. If you will finish well with 3.8 or 4.0 GPA in this course, if you don't study a minimum of eight to 10 hours a week, or even 15 hours of study a week. There's no guarantee. If a student hears that every week, every week, every day, believe me, it's going to sit right. You will sit right. I'm telling you, you will sit right. But a lot of times, you know, we assume that we know. I know what I'm doing. No, no, you don't really know. You need to go and ask. That's why in Nigeria, the way we do it, when you are in level one, your first year in school, and you are taking, let's say you are taking biology, and you're about to take anatomy and physiology, anatomy one, you go and ask people who already took anatomy two, or people already took anatomy one before, you go to their class, they will tell you, you look for their schedule, you go to their class and talk to them, please, how did you do it? Do you have the questions? Do you have, how did you study? Okay, which professor did you take? How was, how, was, how was the class? Because you need to know, ask the people who are ahead. Focus. Focus. Let's look at another scripture. Let's look at the book of the book of John 18, verse 37. John 18, 37. John 18, 37. The pilot therefore said unto him, Thou art a king then. Jesus answered, Thou seest that I am a king. To this end was I born. And for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. I was just telling, excuse me, I was just telling my team just a few minutes ago about this word witness. We can see here, 
we can see here that Jesus is telling the pilot one thing. Jesus made the same statement to Martha yesterday. Like we saw the topic of yesterday called distraction. Jesus told Martha, say one thing is needful. One, one. <laughs> Brethren, you see why we chase many things. I'm a man, me personally, and you too. We are all wired with many gifts, many, plenty gifts. But out of those gifts, one thing, one thing, you must find that one thing that you must be willing to die for. You must find that one thing that you must focus, you must, you must have a raw dead focus on. And that was what Jesus was telling Pilate. I'm going to read it again. He said, thou see that I am a king. To this end was I born. For this reason was I born. And for this cause, I, into this world, I shall bear witness unto the truth. Brethren, you have been born and sent here for one thing. One, in as much that we have other gifts inside of us, don't forget to have one thing, one thing in the heart of God. In the heart of God, that you become a true witness. You maximize the old gift inside you. You maximize your potential to the, to the fullest. One thing, staying focused to that one goal, that vision. And the question I bring to you again is, what is really stealing your time? What is stealing your energy? What have you, what is, what have you put before you right now that has become a vision? What are you chasing? Let's look at the book of Matthew 6.22. Matthew 6.22. Matthew 6.22 says, The light of the body is the eye. If therefore the eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. The eye of the body is what? The eye. If therefore the eye be focused, that single means when the eye is focused, that eye will begin to see light. You won't see darkness. A focused man, when a man is focused, have you ever, I, I know a couple of, I know some of you here who have done track in high school. When you see a person who are really practiced and prepared, when they, when they have competition, they don't think of what they knew about their opponent. Maybe that guy or that lady was one of the best from that school. They don't focus on that. They focus on their own strength. Because where there is focus, there is strength. Where there is focus, you don't see your deficiency no more. Focus isolates. It completely isolates your weaknesses. I'm telling you, it doesn't deny it, but it isolates it completely. So whenever you cannot find strength, the focus has been broken. Whenever you observe your friend, your strength begin to diminish, check out. Focus is broken. Something else is beginning to take your attention. Something else is beginning to sap your energy. Life becomes dynamic when it becomes specific. Therefore, you must fight anything that contains with your focus. Life becomes dynamic when what? When life becomes dynamic when you become specific to your focus. When you choose to chase one thing per time, you will see how your life begins to take shape. And that is why I always say, 
we must be very careful to be everywhere. I used myself as an example yesterday. I do many things, believe me. One of the reasons, even I was listening to Apostle Selman recently, and he says something very profound. He said one of the reasons why many people get drained out, and I see it happens to someone like me too. One of the reasons why some of us get drained out in our churches is because we have many people who are doing nothing. We have men, so you see one person, God has to take the gift of other people because they have sat on their gift. God has to take their gift and put on another man. This one man is doing this, is in singing, is in the youth ministry, is in this, is doing this, is doing, and God has to use them at a quick pace because all that's who are supposed to do it, they are not doing it. So at a point, they get born out quickly. They get born out. Brethren, I had a story from Dr. Paul Enichi at the minister's conference last year. He said, I think it was about catching coma. And the Lord gave the woman of God a revelation. And the Lord said, do you know the reason why I use you at this level of anointing she said no it was a revelation encounter she had and the lord said it was because three people disappointed me so now we have to take the anointing of three people and put on you alone a lot of time when you see some men of god who are doing multiple things not believe me hardly would you see a man who want to show off want to show gifts i want to be everywhere that means the person wants to die. Because you can't do these things in the arms of the flesh. You cannot. It takes the grace of God. Brethren, please, pick the things the Lord has called you to do part time. Where there is dynamic, life becomes dynamic when we become specific. Be specific about what God has called you to do. Don't look at the life of so, so, so present. Yes, we can learn from each other. I can learn from you. You can learn from me. But be specific, focus on what God has called you. On what God has called you. Focus on it. And you will see the hand of God come like never before. One of the easiest ways to destroy a man or a woman is to give him or her another goal or another dream similar to what God has given to them. And in a short time, they will neglect the true vision. One of the easiest way you can easily, easily heal a person's focus, just exchange. Remember the Bible says, there is a way that seems right. Just exchange their dream. In a short time, they will look focused. They will lose it. That is why it's very important that every dream, the Bible tells us, he said, guard your heart jealously. Every dream must be guided. Every vision must be guided. You must guide it. You must guide it from wrong association. You must guide it from even from your own tongue. You can sabotage, you can destroy what God has called you to do, to do by your own tongue. You must guide it jealously by the things you say with your tongue. Guide it. Guide it. Guide it from wrong environment. Wrong association, wrong company, it can completely erase. And that is why, why we chase, why we walk with God, why we focus on what God has called each and every one of us to do. Be very careful with ambition. Ambition not being guided will lead to lust. Many have embarked on an ambition today. And guess what? Those ambition has not been approved by God. They are, they are just our lustful desire to prove to men that we are successful or we can be successful. I'm telling you, 
It's something I have been through. And it's something every day I tell God, God, if this thing is not your will, please help me. Help me. Don't let me go on the journey of no return. There are some journey once you start and success begins to increase. <laughs> Brethren, there the, the are height in all these things. There is a level you get to in life that to come down and humble yourself and tell God that God, I'm sorry, or apologize to the people before the crowd. Do you know what it means for a pastor to fall into sin and come back and face the old church and apologize? It takes the grace of God. And the pastor stepped down for a while until God restored them. Success has a price. Believe me. That's why, you know, like I always tell a colleague of mine on the job, a broke man will always be loyal. Wait until he succeed. A broke man, this, this, this entails male and female. A broke man or woman will always be loyal. Wait until they have attained their highest level of success. See if they are still loyal. See if they... Many of us knows this woman in Nigeria called Madam um, 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 Ade, Ade, Ade Jumo. I think Pastor Nike, I can't remember her first name, Funke Ade Jumo. I was watching one of her videos during pandemic, I think 2021. She said years ago, many years ago, she started sweeping church before she met her husband. She started sweeping, she said till now, when people don't come on time, she still sweeps the church. Till now, despite a level of influence and affluence globally. And that is why we must continue to ask God, God help me to remain on board. I'm telling you, this heart, it can switch overnight. Every day. And that is why you must bring this heart to the surgery room of the Holy Spirit. God, whatsoever that needs to die that is growing in this heart, kill it. Whatsoever that needs to die that is growing. <laughs> Brethren, I'm sure you know the story of David. The same David that killed Goliath at the age of 17. Nobody ever saw him that this man one day he will kill another man because of a woman. Every time you see me pray for the children at the Garden of the Eagles, it's because of what happened to me. The same man that is standing before you was a baby one day that was being dedicated. That the, even my parents, they had a desire, this guy will become something great. They had no idea. The enemy also have an intention to lead the young man to drug addiction. And that is why you must believe, please, I beg you, no matter the level God takes you, Pray to God, God help. Don't assume, oh, please let me say that. Never assume that you will be the same. <laughs> uh, uh, please don't assume. <laughs> don't assume. But I've seen money. Oh. I've not seen millions in billions, but believe me, I've been in places. I've seen money. <laughs> when I was in Nigeria working with guys who were doing things that were not right. I've been, I've been to places where rich kids, where things are. <laughs> Believe me, people misbehave when money comes. You'll be so, that's why you see people sometimes, you know, when this fame, when this fame gets into people, when this, you, if you don't have a secret place, you don't have people who hold you accountable. <laughs> Even then, you'll be so shocked that you might not have the grace to receive correction again. Brethren, please, I beg you, every day, this art, take it to the surgery room. Lord, whatsoever that is growing inside this art, secretly is growing gradually, that is supposed to die, kill it. And whatsoever that's supposed to grow, that is dying, Lord, let it come alive. Let it come alive. When your goal or your dream or your vision becomes unstable, then it means your focus is broken. 
Let's look at the book of James 1 8. The book of James, chapter 1, verse 8. James 1 8, it says, A double minded man is unstable in all his ways. A double minded man, a man who doubts what God has called them to do. A man who is whose mind is everywhere, he can finish what God has called them to do. When your goal or your vision become instable, you observe this instability, inconsistencies in the things you are doing. Observe something is stealing your focus, something is breaking that focus. Something is draining your focus. Something is drowning the focus. Can you do a thorough evaluation? What is that thing that is draining, drowning, and killing your focus? It could be maybe you are going through some financial situation right now. Don't let it drown your focus. Don't let it drain your focus. Take your spirit, your mind, take it to the place. Believe me, let me tell you one of the things I do. One of the things I do, I know, you know, what works for me might not work for you. But one of the things I do, when my focus is being broken, or what I'm going to do is drowning me, I lock up myself. When I mean I lock up, my wife goes to come in the bedroom, but I will hide myself in a secret place and begin to listen to worship. When I listen to the worship to a point, and I don't just listen to any, any worship, I listen to specific songs. To do or to bring my mind to focus. What I'm trying to do at that moment is I'm trying to drown. I'm trying to drown everything that is trying to drain me. I'm trying to obtain the strength of God. Then at a point, I begin to pray. Begin to pray in tongues. If you observe, you can pray. The best thing you do, keep listening to worship. You can also begin to listen to a message. But you see, one of the things the enemy does to many of us is he esteem you out of God's presence. Many, many of us, we are not patient to stay to receive that strength. We want a magic, something to happen just in five minutes. It doesn't happen that way. It doesn't happen that way. You stay, look for a message, specific message to address your situation. I'm telling you, this journey, you must be willing to trade your time. I'm telling you, there are days I can be listening to messages for four hours. Three, I will put other things aside. You must be willing to put other things. One thing is made for. Obtain that one thing. Get it and move to the next. I'm telling you, how can you tell me you need strength? You are trying to do multiple things at the same time. No. No. Obtain that strength. Do every, if, it, if it's going to take you six hours to obtain that strength, focus on that six hours. Break it down. Every two hours, I will do this. I will listen to message. I will begin to engage your mind. Don't just listen. You are watching YouTube. No. Be writing things down. As you are writing it down, your mind is picking it. Psychologically, something is happening to your mind. Something is happening. You are engaging your mind. I bet you, in the, in the next one hour, you realize that that anxiety, those things are gone. They are gone. Because the Bible says in John 6, 63, it said the word that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. The Bible says in Psalm 109, it said the entrance of thy word giveth light. Light and understanding to the simple. When light enters, darkness must check out. John 1, 5. There is a light that shines in darkness, and darkness cannot comprehend it. Brethren, make up, create time, deliberate time to obtain light. To obtain light, because either you believe it or not, the devil is doing everything to break your focus, to drown our focus every day, every day, through social media, through lust, through many things, through personal selfish desire. Focus. Focus. Ask God every day, Lord, help me to be focused. Ask God for strength daily. 
This means you must give your vision, your goal, your dreams to absolute attention. Your absolute attention. Our next topic for next week is going to be vision. Because you see, I said something earlier this year. Being focused or running at a high pace on the wrong vision will lead to destruction. I'm going to say that again. Running zealously with so much tenacity and energy on the wrong vision. That means this person is channeling. They have channeled their strength, their resources on the wrong assignment. Please. And that is why focus becomes significant when it is channeled on the right vision. Right vision. There are many people today, their life is focused on just making money. That kind of life, I would like to you, there's nothing wrong in being successful. But if all you think about life is money, money, that means that person, the love of money has eaten. There's nothing wrong with money. But when it becomes the love of money, that you would do anything for money. You... My sister came to my house, I think on Sunday night or Monday night. She worked in a hospital. One of our colleagues, this is a lady that has three children. The oldest is six years old. God has blessed you. You're already a nurse. This lady just died. Working three jobs, three jobs, three jobs. Why? Why? Guess what? She was born here. Why? <laughs> Reverend? When she was telling me, I was crying like a baby. My wife was there. And the reason why I was crying was because of the children. Please, I beg you. I beg you. There's nothing wrong in being successful. But never allow all of these things. And that's why when I look, there are some things we must ask of God. I was telling my wife today. I said, one of the prayers I pray every day, God, help me to make right decision early. Help me to discover the things I'm supposed to make decisions, the things I'm supposed to do on time. Imagine discovering the things you are supposed to do in your 60s. Ah. And that is why you must keep association with those who are smarter than you, those who can hold you accountable. Fortunately, we live in a generation that will like people who, who pamper us. People, we don't, I'm telling you, many people don't like the truth. I'm just being sincere. I'm just with me growing up <laughs> till today, till today. I'm telling you the truth. I chase people. I chase mentor. Please help me to grow. I chase people, people who will, who will dig out the nonsense inside me. For many people, they don't want you to touch those nonsense. They don't want you to tell them the truth. How do you, how do you want to become, how do you want to emerge to become very successful? I've seen Dr. Paul many times in minister's conference. He said, ministers will come to his office and he will tell them. He said, right in front of the wife, both of them will be crying because he'll be telling them, this has to change. This, you have to stop this. This, you have to... Because you can't grow. You can't grow if you don't want to be accountable. You can't be successful. You can't imagine to become a great man or woman if you don't want to be accountable. How can you be in a relationship? You don't want your partner to tell you the truth. Every time you become, everything leads to argument. You must defend yourself. No. Take the correction. Ah, babe, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. But this is the reason. First, accept the correction first. Rather, many become very defensive. Please, I beg you. I beg you. I beg you. Focus. 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 Keep right association. Right company. Right company. Broken focus is the easiest way to broken destiny. When the enemy wants to kill destiny, it breaks the focus. The easiest way the enemy kills a destiny 
is to break the focus what you what you put in front of you what is in front of you it breaks it brethren don't allow the enemy break your focus i don't know what you are going through stay focused stay focused on the promises of god don't give up abraham waited for 25 years joseph waited until the lord sent his word for him wait keep keep working with god keep building yourself keep applying for that job keep building keep learning keep sharpening your skills obstacles really becomes visible the moment your focus is broken the moment your focus is completely broken you begin to see your weaknesses the more you begin to see the things that you are not supposed to see about yourself it doesn't mean that you shouldn't acknowledge them but they shouldn't drown your strength they shouldn't drown your faith peace to protect your focus focus on the desired future not your current situation focus on the desired the desired output of what you want to see a lot of times we have been and that's why like i said at the beginning i believe so much in mentorship i believe so much in communication education educate people education doesn't mean you have to go to school and i'm not please let me balance that i'm not saying everybody believes education means you must go to school and and get a degree no even that one is the first education. The real education is mental development. That will never end. The school education, after four years, six years, it will end. After eight years, four years, first degree, second year, master's degree, another maybe five years, you get PhD. Okay, what happens then? Are you going to stop? No. Mental development never ends till you die. The moment you stop educating your mind, you begin to die. That is the real education. The real education. Build your mind. Build your mind. There was a saying by about Einstein. Whatever the mind can conceive, the mind can achieve. Only if the mind can focus. Whatever the... <laughs> Brethren, go to New York. Go to Singapore. Singapore, Dubai, New York. Some nations of the world. I want you to look at those glass, glass high scraper buildings. Look at those buildings and tell me. Not, you see, I am a very deep thinker. I think deep a lot. I want you to think about the architect that drafted out. That was drafted out from the mind, the brain of a man. A man. <laughs> Brethren, this mind. I want you to tell yourself, I'm too loaded to be small. I'm too loaded to be trapped. I'm too loaded to be small. You can't be small. Only if you can engage your mind. You see, I've said this before. What the body eats to gain muscle, to gain strength, is physical food. What the mind eats to become great and make right decision is called knowledge. Knowledge. If you starve your mind of knowledge, that mind will become disabled. Disabled means it will be weak. It won't be able to make right decision because the decisions that, that last long, decisions that, 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 that impact generations can only be made in the place of knowledge. A man who doesn't place value on knowledge cannot make an impactful decision. And that's why daily, daily, we must place empathy on knowledge. Never embark on a journey without doing your research, without making deliberate acquisition of knowledge. Number two, give your own present attention to the future you desired because whatever you give your attention to we eventually master you. It will enslave you. 
whatsoever you give your attention to, it will capture you. It will enslave. The same way God wants us to be enslaved to our dreams. You give yourself, you give 100% of yourself to it. I was listening to some leadership videos yesterday. And that leader, you know, Pastor Kojo, was saying something. He said, if your vision has not really captured you to the point that you are isolated from every other thing that people count as fun, you have not really caught it. You have not caught the vision yet. Every vision will isolate you. People will be enjoying, but <laughs> I'm not an As Asna fan. I don't really watch football like I used to. I said Wenger, I believe is Asna or Liverpool um, 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 coach. They ask him, where do you know in UK or in Liverpool or around? The coach said, the only place I know is my house and the training stadium. I know no place. And I see the same thing in some of my mentors in ministry. Brethren, <laughs> this journey, you want to be successful? You can't be where everybody you are going. It, please, it's not a sin. Let me I'm not, it's not a sin. I'm saying it again. But you can't be living the way everybody's living. You can't be eating the way everybody's eating. Vision, dreams, he isolate the dreamer. He consume the dreamer. He will consume you until he consume you. You can't give your 100% attention to it. Please, I beg you, go and find yourself. Find yourself. Give attention. I've said this before. Let us become a generation that we spend so much money on Nike, on art, on wears. How much money do you spend on your mind? Spend money on your mind. And this mind will produce billions for you. Spend money. Spend money. The greatest contention I have right now is time. 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 I'm telling you, time. Now you are single. You are not married yet. You don't have children. You are in a relationship. You are not married yet. Spend time. Build capacity now. Build capacity now. Because the time will come. You will... <laughs> Time will become an enemy to you. You will see time. Time will be flying. And you, you, only small time you will have for yourself. Because other people you love will demand for your time. Focus increases your strength or reveal your strength or passion or weaknesses. What you focus on, you reveal your strength, you reveal your passion, you also reveal your weaknesses. So observe it. What do I really focus on? What are the things that captures my attention? If you observe that these things, then that means it might be a weakness. You observe that this thing is drowning, it's draining you. If you are giving your attention to it, that means you are taking your focus, it's, it's drowning, cut it off. Take it to God in prayer. Be careful with what you hear, see, or meditate. If you really want to focus and achieve your goal, be careful. If you go and check the book of 2 Kings, chapter 2, the sons of the prophet, they try, because of our time, we won't be able to read it. They tried to discourage Elisha. They said, do you know that the Lord is taking your father today? He said, be still, be quiet, I know. They, they saw it. They, they have received it because they, are, they also have prophetic gift. But guess what? They never desired to receive what Elijah carried. The same thing is happening in our generation. Many of us are seeing the great things God is doing to other young people around the world. But many don't desire it. What many are telling themselves, it is those who are caught, not me. My own goal is for me to drive Bentley. My own goal is, you know, with, with Virgin, I'll leave it there. Another factor is keep the right association, the right company that increases your focus and your vision or your assignment. Stay around people that inspire your, your focus. 
people that change how you believe me. Most of let me say pretty much all my mentors, they are all in their fifties, forties, way way older than me. Look for people who are doing way better. People that we that we always inspire you, not people that will drain you. Without taking personal responsibility, your vision or goal or dream would never come to actualization. So please, I beg you, take responsibility. We have just one prayer. Take responsibility. Take responsibility or else everything will just die off naturally. I want us to pray and tell the Lord, anyone, anything, whosoever, is draining my focus or drowning my focus. Lord, let them be terminated. Let whatsoever thing in me or around me that is draining and drowning my focus be terminated tonight. Prayer in the name of Jesus. <clears throat> my Lord and my God, whatsoever is within me or around me that is draining or drowning my focus, be terminated. Be terminated, 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 be terminated. Whatsoever, whatsoever is within me or around me, draining my focus, drowning my focus, be terminated, be removed, 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 be removed. In Jesus' name we pray. Heavenly Father, we say thank you. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for who you are. Father, be thy exalted. As we go to bed tonight, cover ourselves with the blood of Jesus. Lord, we make a demand for open heavens. I decree for those who are trusting you, for miracle jobs, for healing, for signs, for one thing or the other, for financial breakthrough. Lord, let their desired be released in the name of Jesus. Let their heart desire be released. Be released in the name of Jesus. Be released in the name of Jesus. I decree testimonies. Lord, encounter us tonight. Visit us tonight. Father, let your name alone be exalted. Guide us. Let our weakness be deleted, O oh God. Give us your strength. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen in Jesus' name. Thank you, everyone. God bless you. I'll see you on Monday, Monday night, 10 p.m. Bye-bye. Thank you, Brother. Have a good night. You're welcome.